Hi, Genevieve Jacobs from Region Media with this week's News Wrap. It is Reconciliation Week and the theme for this year's Reconciliation Week is Be Brave, Make Change. I'm in the National Gallery where that has always been part of the ethos and something very big and very significant has happened. The Aboriginal Memorial, these 200 beautiful burial poles have been relocated from the space many of us have known them uh, from at the entry up into very much literally and metaphorically the heart of the building and Bruce Johnson McLean is with me he is uh, one of the curators of Aboriginal art First Nations art here at the National Gallery Bruce what's happened what's the rationale behind the change well um, I guess we really wanted to bring the Ab Aboriginal Memorial back to the heart of the gallery um, 10 years ago, or sorry, 12 years ago, when the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Art Wing was developed, um, the memorial was, of course, taken from uh, this area and placed next to the front door, which was a really important gesture at that point in time, um, having uh, First Nations art first. Um, but with time, we've found that fewer and fewer of our audience actually goes and engages with the work. Um, so we really wanted to place it back at the centre of everybody's experience here at the, at the gallery um, and to really ground everybody's experience as they go through the gallery. And Bruce, that, that's significant because this is in fact one of the great and major works of the National Collection and the parallels being made with blue poles that this is black poles. Uh, tell us a little bit about the history of this work which goes back to a, a pioneering concept by John Mundine and some really inspired curatorship. Yes, well, of course, um, John Mundine in um, 1987 um, started working on this project and um, and socialised the idea with the artist at Ramanginning, where he was then the art advisor. Um, and uh, everybody in the community really had an experience or a story of conflict that related to this idea of the Aboriginal memorial, this memorial for Aboriginal people who'd lost their lives defending their country that didn't exist anywhere else. So there was no monument um, or memorial to um, these people anywhere in the country. Um, so together, um, the 44 artists, including John, created this work um, of 200 dupun uh, or hollow log burial poles um, that stand in memorial for all of those lives lost over those 200 years between 1788 and 1988. Now people may have walked past it and when it was located at the front door and perhaps not understood that there are quite a lot of journeys that are going on here. The, the path for example that cuts through the installation is the path of the Glide River going through the Arafura Swamp into the Arafura Sea. So for Yolngu people this is a, a replication of a significant journey for them. But I'd love you to just describe what these pieces actually are. Where are they placed in Yolngu culture and, and what's their significance? So every one of these poles has its own story to tell. Um, the installation tells of the story and is the memorial, um, but each one of these poles um, is a memorial to the artist conceptually. Um, and although it's made for an art audience, it's not a sacred object, um, they do um, uh, come from the tradition of making hollow log burial coffins. Um, so these works all have a really great significance and importantly there are many of Australia's greatest artists within this memorial. Um, we often don't talk about the individual artists um, like you know David Malangi whose uh, art was on the um, dollar note. Um, we don't talk about George Milperu who's an incredible artist. Um, uh, uh, Philip Gadegade, these artists are all within this space and they're all incredible Australian artists within their own right. Bruce, it's an absolutely gorgeous installation and we've been watching children come through, um, people wandering past and, and examining the poles at, at really close quarters. I know there was a beautiful smoking ceremony yesterday to mark the installation here so I guess the invitation this Reconciliation Week and from now onwards is to, to come and engage and take the journey and uh, to, to wander around the course of 
the Glide River of the Yolngu people. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. Congratulations. And look, also making news on the site this week, we are talking about the aftermath of the election, um, changes in the APS and in departments. Uh, let the mogging begin. We also have the story of the Canberra man who has built a full-sized space rocket replica in his garage and not just any rocket if there were such a thing it's the colonial viper 2 from battlestar galactica <laughs> apparently he had proposed building a full-size stargate at his front gate and his wife drew the line at that point <laughs> housing prices have come down for the first time in three years that's pretty remarkable in this very hot climate uh, for housing but the snow is also falling and um, black skies this week as the first snow came in. It's all over the um, Brindabellas. You can see it up at Tidbinbella, so winter is well and truly here. And at the Right Act at Region Media, we are all about the local stories. So you can sign up for our newsletter. It'll be in your inbox every week, every Thursday, or for our daily digest. And come and join the great big Canberra conversation. Learn about the background to amazing great precious treasures of the national capital like this one. Bruce, thank you so much for your time. You're very welcome. And I'm Genevieve Jacobs. This is Region Media.